In this video, I'm going to talk about my work, This Country is Yours, and cover the entire process of making the work from conceiving ideas to technical information to production of a work to the larger historical political context the work is situated in. First, let me start with technical aspects of the work and the materials I use. Like most of all my photography projects, I used a 4x5 view camera for This Country is Yours. A 4x5 view camera is an analog camera that has the most basic camera technology, not much different from the early cameras during photography's invention. There is no electronics involved and no mirror inside the camera like in DSLR or 35mm cameras. As a result, the image is upside down on the viewfinder. Another difference between DSLR or 35mm camera and view camera is that with a view camera, you do not look through the viewfinder to frame your picture. Instead, you look at the image reflected on the ground glass of the viewfinder. This process has its own magic and I love it. 4x5 refers to 4 inches by 5 inches sheet film the camera uses. The camera takes sheet film and not roll film as in 35mm format or medium format cameras. Because of the larger negative size, the resolution, the detail the image produces are immaculate. You can easily make 40 by 50 inches print and the image hold up beautifully. The main reason I use this camera is because I find the process of looking at the image reflecting on the ground glass underneath the dark cloth extremely gratifying. I vividly remember a moment when I was making a portrait of a firefighter in Boston where I was pursuing my MFA at the Massachusetts College of Art and Design. The firefighter was an elderly gentleman named Bill Powers. It was a beautiful spring day. We were behind the firehouse chatting, talking about his life and making pictures. Underneath a dark cloth, I was trying to compose the shot and there was a gentle breeze. I could see his single gray strand of hair swimming in the breeze. It was an intimate moment of human connection between the two of us, like between a father and a son. Since this camera is bulky, it has to be on a tripod. The photographer has to be underneath a dark cloth to compose the shot, load the sheet film, change the settings on the lens before taking the picture. It's a laborious process. The whole process, even if you are super fast, takes about two to three seconds. Since the process slows you down, you observe minute details such as Bill's hair sewing in the bridge. It makes you observe the edges of the frame. You spend more time composing the image, which makes each image stronger. And each shot cost you at least around Canadian $10 these days if you're shooting color film like me. $5 for the film and another $5 to get it processed. Because of the cost involved, you don't go on a shooting spree that is inherent with digital cameras. This camera also provides contemplative space as you are looking through the viewfinder. With, with cameras such as DSLR, you are so busy trying to freeze the action or trying to capture a moment. For these reasons, I used this camera for this project, This Country is Yours. Although I shoot analog, the rest of my process is digital. Once the film gets processed in a commercial lab, I use Epson flatbed scanner for low-res proof scans. Generally, I spend a few days looking at the proof scans before I make any selection. The selected images get a high-res scan. I use a flex-tide scanner for high-res files. When I scan, I scan at the highest resolution that the scanner allows me. I scan as 3F file format, which is flex -tides raw file format. From there on, I make work prints on inkjet printers. 
My work prints are 13 by 19 inches. My exhibition prints are printed as archival inkjet prints and printed in two sizes, 22 by 29 inches and 29 by 37 inches. Now let me provide some background information about this work. This country is yours was photographed in Kathmandu, the capital city of my birth country, Nepal. I came to the US in 1994 to pursue university education and have been living in North America since. I have been living in Canada for the past 12 years. Nepal has gone through a great deal of change during my lifetime. And during much of this time, I've been away abroad. At a personal level, this country is yours is about grasping the complexities of these changes that have taken place in my birth country while I've been away. For this project, I traveled to Nepal eight times between 2012 and 2016. The work was initially supported by a crowdfunding campaign where 100 individuals made a contribution. Later on, the project was funded by Toronto Arts Council, Ontario Arts Council, and Canada Art Council's travel grant. This Country is Yours focuses on activists involved in six civil rights movements of Nepal during the constitution drafting process. Women, indigenous nationalities, Dalits, sexual minorities, religious minorities, and Madises. I made the images during the period of writing of Nepal's new constitution. The constitution writing process lasted for eight years and it was a fraught process. There were contentious issues such as demarcation of the federal states, citizenship and religion. There were a lot of aspirations from those who had been historically sidelined and that was the focus of my project. The constitution was eventually promulgated in 2015 as Nepal was reeling through a disastrous earthquake. The ruling parties found it an opportunate time to push their agendas in the constitution, disregarding aspirations of the many of the civil rights movements. Portraits make up the majority of the photographs in this project. What should a portrait of an activist look like? How do you represent a person who has been robbed by history? How do you photograph someone who seems ordinary but has stood their ground to remedy injustice? I ask these questions while engaging with the activists who were spearheading Nepal's civil rights movement. Adopting a slow, methodical use of large format camera, I sought to create living and breathing sculpture of this activist. I wanted to see where they lived, observe their office spaces, be in proximity with them, and breathe the same air. I wanted to embody this activist's faces, their limbs, and their bodies, and their identities in Nepal's unjust history. I wanted to encapsulate the idea of this activist negotiating a fraught past and internalizing a place of frightful dignity in their own country. Incorporating aspects of fragility, strength, and poise, I wanted to elevate this activist in images as they contest in the fight of their lifetime. Nepal until 2008 was constitutionally declared a Hindu state, ruled by a Hindu monarch. The monarchy lasted for 240 years and throughout this time, Nepal's laws and policies were based on Hindu religion. The Hindu caste system stratifies the society in four groups. At the top are pure Brahmins that acts as priests, and at the very bottom are Dalits considered untouchables. Madhises, on the other hand, are a group of people who are from the plains. Nepal, geographically, is a small country, rectangular in size, approximately 200 kilometers wide and 800 kilometers long. In the southern belt, there is a narrow strip of fertile plains. As you head north, the altitude gradually rises until it reaches the Himalayas. The strip of plain is called Madhese 
and those who reside there as Madhesis. Madhesis in physical appearance and in culture are different from the dominant hill people and they have been historically discriminated by the hill ruling class. Now let me talk about the process of making portraits. I would spend a lot of time telephoning people. I would find phone numbers through people I already photographed. I would call prospective participants and explain them my project. Often I would carry a portfolio of prints to show and explain my project and my intentions. Sometimes I would go to their homes, sometimes to their offices, and at times events such as political rallies. It really depended upon where the activist asked me to meet them. At the beginning of the project, I would also interview people since I was trying to understand the issues. On average, I spent about an hour photographing each individual. I would shoot five to eight films per person on average. I mostly relied on available light. When there was not enough light, I would use a speed light on a stand that was synced to my camera. Nepal had chronic electricity outages at times 14 hours a day. So lighting equipment would be of no use. I prefer speed light for its mobility too. Once I photograph someone, I would always make prints and send it to them. I hired an assistant in Kathmandu who would make prints at a commercial lab and then drop them off to the people I photographed. People always appreciate when you give prints. It builds a relationship. They trust you and it can open up doors. The work has been exhibited in multiple international venues. It was exhibited in Nepal Art Council in Kathmandu and Toronto Image Works Gallery in Toronto as solo exhibitions. As group exhibitions, it has been exhibited at Fries Museum in Lower Den in the Netherlands, Art Science Museum in Singapore, and the Gothe Institute in New Delhi. My ultimate goal is to publish this work as a photo book. To date, it has seen many versions of photo book markets. While this country is yours engages both socially and politically, it has a personal thread that runs through it. I'm fascinated by the idea of a place and the idea of belonging to it. After living in North America for 27 years, I'm amazed how attached I remain to Nepal. This country is yours at its very heart is moved by my transnational identity that hovers between the East and the West, South Asian and North American, Nepali and Canadian. This country is yours is about longing and belonging, but also about the enduring vigilance required by both sentiments.